Um, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the October 12th school committee meeting. First order of business is to approve the regular meeting minutes of September 14th. Can I get a motion? I'll make a motion for the approval of the regular meeting minutes dated September 14th, 2022. Can I get a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next, we will go to student recognition awards. All right, thank you. For October, the fifth grade team has chosen Grace Leonardo as student of the month. Grace is the complete student of the month package. Not only is she an outstanding student, but she's an overall sweet young lady who is kind and helpful to all. Grace's favorite subject is ELA, and whenever Grace has some downtime, you can always find her reading a book. She loves to read fantasy and realistic fiction. Some of her favorite series include Harry Potter, Keeper of the Lost City, and Percy Jackson. Grace loves coming to school to learn new things and be with her friends. Outside of school, Grace enjoys playing soccer. She has been playing since she, she was three years old. She also enjoys drawing, drawing and being a Girl Scout. One of her favorite things to do is visit, to visit her grandparents in Wisconsin and in Arizona. The fifth grade team chose Grace for Student of the Month because she is always thinking ahead. She knows exactly what she needs to do and is always ready and prepared. She puts 110% effort into everything she does and does not hesitate to ask questions when needed. She loves to help out in any way that she can. So congratulations to Grace and keep up the good work. Congratulations, Grace. Any committee members have some questions? I do. Yeah. No, go for it. I know, Please. right? Please I know Grace. That's awesome. <laughs> I actually know somebody. <laughs> Hi, Grace. Hi. So good to see you. So do you remember me? Yes. Yes. So I coached you in the spring. Mm -hmm. well, I pretended I was coaching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm so proud of you. This is the first time I've seen a fan club come. Yes. So it's awesome. <laughs> it was nice. But you know what, Grace? That actually speaks to who you are as a person and a friend. And um, you should be really proud of yourself. So congratulations. That's awesome. I wanted to add, Grace, that, again, this is the coolest thing, the fan club. But I think because you're a role model, right? <coughs> and being in fifth grade and kind of being one of the big dogs over across the street. That's pretty cool. Um, what would you, uh, you know, we don't get to see too many younger students come in here, you know, first grade, second grade, knowing that you've made your way through Major Edwards up to this point. What are some like tips or words of wisdom you might be able to give some of the, uh, your younger members of the fan club? Um, to work hard and just, hmm. Just keep doing what you're doing and try your hardest. That's awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. You are a role model. So congratulations. We're really, very, very proud of you. Nice job. Congratulations. The middle school student of the month, I'm happy to announce, is Davi Ferrer, in grade seven. Uh, he has excelled in all of his classes. Stellar first year pro uh, first progress report. He participates, always asks good questions, and math his work is always neat and complete. He is well behaved and is always on task, even when others may be off. He does a great job staying focused. He enjoys video games and basketball. Davi has Davi has one brother, two sisters, and he's the youngest. And he would like to play professional basketball in the future and continue to live in Massachusetts. Congratulations, Doug. Congratulations, Doug. Jason. So, Dobby, uh, seventh grade, what's your favorite subject right now? Math. Math. And so, who's your math teacher this year? Mr. Coggins. Mr. Coggins. So, Mr. Coggins is pretty cool. I know he's got a one-year-old. Is he, is he getting pretty tired in class? For the one-year-old girl? <laughs> I'm not sure. Not sure. That's so that's good. He's, he's shaking pretty well. Um, what type of video games you into? I'm a gamer. I really don't have favorite video games. No, you just like to play whatever. And then mm -hmm. we want to hope you want to play for the Celtics one day. Are you a Celtics fan? Not really. Uh-oh. 
Uh, but you can still live in Massachusetts and play for another team. Awesome, I'll take that. Dobby, congratulations, buddy. You two are a role model. We're very, very proud of you. Good job. Thank you. Run aboard is the uh, also the high school recipient. Uh, she wasn't available to come tonight, and obviously Mr. Fournier couldn't come tonight because of nature's classroom. Thank you. Thank you. Student advisory council. Um, so the student council this month actually just wrapped a successful homecoming week, and they're getting ready for trick or treating for cans, which will be later this month. Students will be both on like routes and cars, and also participating in the trunk or treating at the elementary school for collecting cans, which will both be on October 30th. And members of the council are also attending the Massachusetts Association of Student Councils Officer Shop at Middleborough High School uh, later this month. The National Honor Society is participating in many volunteer opportunities, such as helping out at the food pantry in town or the fall festival later. Um, they're also selling tickets at the football game where they collect <coughs> money to donate to different organizations. And the first recipient of these funds is the Dismas House in Worcester, which is a halfway house. Um, the NAHS just um, wrapped up helping student council with some homecoming decorations and is working to um, plan for a theme for their yearly calendar fundraiser. The Wellness Club has been meeting regularly and has just elected their executive board. Their focus this month is on childhood cancer prevention. The Interact Club meets regularly and has been volunteering in the community. The GSA has also been meeting regularly and recently elected their executive board for the year. Um, the yearbook committee is in the, is in the process of creating the yearbook and cover ideas were submitted recently and seniors are to turn in their page for the end of the month. Um, the fall sports, girls soccer is currently two, oh yeah, girls soccer is two, nine and one. I'm not sure what happened today. Um, the boys soccer team is four, seven and one. Again, I'm not sure they're, what happened today. Um, the cheerleading team is cheering at football games and is preparing for two competitions in this month, um, the 29th at Natick and the 30th at Shepherd Hill. The football team is currently 4-0. Um, seniors, uh, class update, so seniors is hosting a Halloween dance for middle schoolers to fundraise for events later this year, like their class trip. The junior class is currently planning and fundraising for prom. Um, the sophomores don't really have a lot going on right now, I guess. And the freshmen is sell are selling uh, West Boylston apparel to fundraise. Excellent. Thank you. Any uh, questions? No? All right. Thank you. Um, next, I'd like to acknowledge Mrs. Pratt for taking our minutes and our camera crew, which have, uh, we have some new faces um, and multiple cameras. So <laughs> thank you for recording. Uh, are we streaming or live or anything? Is, no, just for availability later. Excellent. Well, thank you. All right. Mr. Maha with the highlight on schools. Thank you. Uh, on Tuesday, September 27th, the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education announced the recently released 2022 MCAS had demonstrated mixed results compared with 2021. While math and science scores increased, English language arts scores declined, most notably in grades three through five, where writing scores were noted for their historic lows. DESE has thus gained early literacy a focus as a result of the, the weak ELA scores. Governor Bates Baker has recently dedicated 13.7 million towards early literacy and screening. DESE has also stated that it has reported less accountability data than usual and that no targets or measures of progress are included in this year's reports. While the performance of the West Boys and Public Schools continues to fall short of its pre-pandemic 2019 results, the district continues to achieve at levels above the state average. Results noted 14 of 17 areas with higher results, with increases in grades 3 through 8 at 20% above, and that is in math and in science at 16% above being particularly strong. Students with disabilities in grades 3 through 8 ELA and math also performed above the state average with ELA at 5% exceeding or met and math at 9% exceeding or met, which is nice to see after some years not reaching those levels. Mr. Audette and Mr. Forney will be providing detailed reports in the forthcoming uh, weeks, and both buildings will be mailing out student reports in the next few days. I say we, we just received those at the end of last week. So some summaries. Um, obviously, we did not test. Um, since 2019. That was the last year we had full tests in grades three through eight. 2020, there were no testing in, 
any grade level. 2021 there was a half test in grades three through eight and a full test in grades 10, and then a resumption of full testing this past spring. Statewide trends have noted, uh, again, mixed results when compared with 2021, with an increase in math scores, and a decline in ELA scores, with science scores increasing slightly. All subject areas have yet to reach the pre-pandemic level. Student absenteeism remains a challenge across the board. As noted earlier, earlier literacy is a concern. The writing scores on grades three through eight results at a 25% decline from 2019 to 2022. Our district results, grades three through eight, uh, West Boylston was at 52% with the state average at 41. Uh, that's 11% above the state average, yet 6% below the 2021 results. Again, the parallel with the state there with the decline in, in three through eight uh, ELA. Uh, math is 20% above the state average, 9% above the 2021 results. And again, uh, three through eight science is at 16% above, uh, uh, above the state average with 6% above the 2021 results. Grade 10 ELA is 13% above the state average, 6% above last year's performance with math at 12% above, uh, and again, 10% above last year's performance. In your, uh, continuing your packet, you have comparisons to neighboring districts with what spoils average for meeting and exceeding expectations on the top of ELA, math, and science, the mass average uh, on the bottom, and then our, our neighboring districts uh, in between. And I did want to note on the grade 10 science, that first column, should be uh, next generation. Second column is the legacy. That uh, last year was the last year that the legacy exam would, would be administered. That's been phased out. So that's the discrepancy in those two results there. Again, so did we issue both last year? They had, a, they had the option to take both, yes. Okay. Uh, you will see some of our neighboring districts we did quite well in comparison to. Uh, there are others that uh, are, are traditional. We tend to lag a little far behind. I was uh, happy to note some of our performances as we looked at our uh, special ed population and our low income population, which uh, is high in, in with, uh, comparison with some of our neighbors. Obviously, Clinton and uh, Worcester are, are far above us. Um, Auburn is uh, very high, too. I was surprised to know that Auburn's uh, low income is about 43%, um, and, and Leicester as well. But uh, I, I feel our performance is pretty solid in comparison with our neighbors and the state average across the board. I did include uh, the last two pages, uh, 2019 versus 2022, the meeting or exceeding. Uh, the comparison there would be a generally below ELA with 10%. Uh, math is leveled off at 63%. Science is one point below uh, from 64 to 63%. So we kind of rebounded there. And grade 10, we remain 7% below where we were 2019 in ELA. 3% below in math, and 2% below in science. The last page is our special ed performance. I, I did note at the beginning, for many years, we did not have students in the uh, meeting or exceeding expectations classification for special ed, and we have made some strides in that area. Uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Trainer, for your advocacy. And we are currently 5% above the state average with 17% of students with disabilities meeting or exceeding expectations. And our ELL students continue to succeed as well, uh, with 20% exceeded or met, which is parallel to the state. And grade three through eight math, with 9% above the state average, 13% above ELL and former ELL students in three through eight math. Grades five through eight science, we are 2% uh, below the state with the uh, students with disabilities and 3% above or former ELL students. And we are 2% above in grade 10 science. So. All in all, in comparison with the state average, uh, we are generally above. Uh, there were some areas that we lagged below. Grade seven, um, math and ELA, I believe grade three, and grade five was a couple points below as well. I think two points above. Uh, I know Mr. Odette and Mr. Forney will be getting into more grade level details uh, in their upcoming reports. I know we've also talked about uh, our student learning goal for years was 5% above the state average. We adjusted a few years ago to 7%. Uh, I'm not sure if it's worthy to discuss uh, increasing that to a, a higher percent. 
Yeah, I don't know. I think um, the only comment I have about that is, 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 is <clears throat> we want to stay above the state, of course, but I also don't want to be declining with the state but staying above, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. So I was thinking about either increasing the percentage above the state or maybe having some other kind of benchmark within, within ourselves as well. But maybe something for discussion for future meeting. But that was just kind of what I was thinking when I was reviewing it. Any other questions for Mr. Maher? We'll let Jen come sit. Excuse me? We'll let Jen come sit. Oh, hi, Jen. Sorry, we have a senior and we only have three games left in there. <laughs> All right. Um, if there's no other questions on the MCAS. We go to community input. Hi, I'm Anel Benson. Um, I'm here with Kim Terrio and Lindsay Malone. We're actually going to be hopefully on your agenda in November. We just wanted to introduce ourselves. Um, we are going to propose bringing lacrosse into the middle high school. Um, both Kim and Lindsay are very active as coaches and board members to the Guardians program, um, which some of you are familiar with. It's here in town. Um, we're already practicing on the fields out here. Um, there is a significant interest in town with over 30 kids currently enrolled in the school looking to play. Um, so we are looking to get this program going. Um, we have coaches on board. We have um, financing and funding ready to roll so we are excited to um, be able to get on the agenda for next month and give you more details. Excellent. Thank you. That's great. great. Thank you. Thank you. Great. All right. Um, with that we can move on to approval of warrants. Can I get a motion to approve the payables warrant from 919-22? I'll make a motion for the approval of the payables warrant dated uh, September 19th, 2022. Can I get a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> um, approval of the payroll warrants 916 and 930. Can I get a motion? <coughs> I'll make a motion that we approve the payroll warrants dated 916, 2022 and 930, 2022. Can I get a second? A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, uh, subcommittee reports. We'll go with the budget and capital planning subcommittee. Jason. So morning. we met this evening prior to tonight's meeting to um, go over some forecasts of the upcoming budget, um, which Mr. Pompreon will talk more about at a future meeting. That's about it. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, negotiation subcommittee. As far as negotiations, um, we have not met since the last meeting. We have not. So um, the only thing I will say about negotiations is we are meeting next Monday, Monday. to discuss the um, possibility of changing the high school schedule from blocks to um, a different schedule. We are looking at what might work. Um, um, so that does kind of tie into negotiations because there are contractual things that happen with respect to changing the schedule. So um, that will be on the 17th, and um, I'm sure we will be talking about that much more in the future. All right. Thank you. Um, communications and reports. Major Edwards. Okay. Thank you. This month has been busy at Major Edwards uh, due to a combination of students adjusting to the classrooms and lessons by the teachers and completing our fall benchmark assessments. They also had some opportunities to have some fun inside and outside of the classroom. Um, on the 21st and 22nd of September, we housed our open house. Families had a chance to visit the classrooms, meet their teachers, and see some of the, the work that was taking place so far this year. Uh, the teachers we're very proud to show off, and students were proud to show off their classrooms, and it was great to see so many families that showed up uh, for our open house. In the first month of school year, a lot of the focus is on learning the routines and expectations of the classroom, but at the same time, 
Um, teachers will spend a lot of time um, assessing, reviewing prior skills learned, and planning instruction <clears throat> to meet the needs of each student. During our professional development half day on this past Friday, teacher, teachers met in grade level teams to hold discussions with support teachers in the areas of literacy, math, and ELL. The information gained from our fall assessments, our star testing, Lexia, Bass, uh, Dibbles, et cetera, helps kind of frame these discussions with regard to instructional strategies and necessary supports and interventions that are needed for students. Um, they took time to appropriately group these students, get schedules are formulated, and um, we use that information to form to have the supports during the school week each each day, uh, excuse me each day and each week. This month, the students had picture day and also participated in our first K through five whole school assembly, which we're calling community meeting. This also took place last Friday, and during the community meeting, we spent time having students share and perform skits and what it means to be safe, responsible, and respectful. One student from each classroom was recognized and given a certificate for being a student that exemplifies these aforementioned traits uh, within the school and um, the classroom and within the school. Also, we um, learned about Hispanic Heritage Month and celebrated World Smile Day by wearing the color yellow. And we had a visit from Lexia the Lion, which is a mascot that the students voted on uh, for our Le Lexia to celebrate the kids that are progressing in that area. Um, I won't reveal who the lion was, but it was very exciting for the students and they enjoyed getting their picture <laughs> taken with the mascot. <clears throat> Additionally, our fourth grade students traveled to Boylston to walk and enjoy and learn about the New England Botanic Garden in Tower Hill. And our first grade students traveled to Tuga's family farm in Northborough for some apple picking, pumpkin picking, and delicious donuts. Yes, they do. Next year, I need to go. Yes, you do. Uh, <laughs> the weather really worked out for us. Um, everything I heard that they were uh, represented Major Edwards well and had a really amazing time. Just some important dates to mention coming up. Uh, as Rich had mentioned, <coughs> either this Friday or on Monday, we'll be mailing out our MCAS results to families in grades three. Three, three and four. Mr. Fournier will take care of grade five from last year. And then we have our picture retakes on October 27th. And on Monday, October 31st, we'll have our Halloween parade, which is gonna be from 115 to 145. We're gonna be sharing the details of that parade um, next week with families. And then on Thursday, excuse me, I missed one. Um, October 30th, as, as mentioned, was the trunk or treat that's put on by our PTA. And then on Thursday, November 3rd, we will be sharing our classroom uh, newsletters for November and December with our families. That's all I have for you guys. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to know. Any questions for Alex? Answer questions about. Oh, all right. Thanks. Um, Mr. Fournier is not with us, but he has a report in our packet, uh, unless you had something you wanted to. No. Uh, Jerry? All right. All right. Roger. You don't get her time though. Nope. No. I'm just giving out a, a new updated expenditure report for the month of September. I apologize for handing it out to you this evening, but actually it was just finished by the payroll secretary and myself today on it. Um, what it did, what it does is it encompasses the transfers that were made throughout the budgets to account for grants and so forth and so on. And it also includes the encumbered payroll funds that are in there. There's still a work it's still a work in progress, but the balance went from nine million, nine point four million down to seven hundred thousand. So we we did encumber quite a bit of payroll funds. There's still some left for the stipends, the, the longevity payments and so forth and so on that we have to work out the details with. But we get we're getting there on it. It's a more accurate report that you have. Uh, every account that we have right now because we did make some budget transfers is is uh, a okay on that end of it. Um, and uh, as I said, um, next month it should be probably finalized for the, um, all the payments and payroll. That's the basic of the hold up with it. As was mentioned uh, by Mr. Poncelli, we did the committee did meet tonight just to go over the capital planning and so forth. We did go over the FY22 budget, how we finished that off. We did go into the FY23, where we're at right now with these transfers and these uh, encumbrances of funds. We also looked at FY24 to open the door for next year, which is gonna be right around the corner. This is where 
halfway through October now. We will be starting budgeting in November, as we always do. Um, just to go forward with that, we looked at capital and so forth and so on, and we'll come back with a report uh, on FY24 and capital uh, at a later, later date. That's basically what I have. Any questions on the expenditure report? I do apologize again just for getting to you tonight, but I didn't realize we had a meeting before, so it was <laughs> we were late coming into this meeting. Thanks, Roger. Okay. Any questions? All right, Mr. Maha. Uh, any report? Uh, the NCAS is included. Uh, suspensions <coughs> student attendance through September 30th. Uh, I did want to note that Eric Bokankiewicz has been working in conjunction with cyber schools to provide a much needed update to the district's current website. Uh, the next step is to place the task for mock-up creation um, and then hopefully we'll have that up and running by the end of the month. Once the district site is created and approved, uh, cyber school will its focus to the building sites. Uh, that isn't a large expenditure either, so we'll hopefully we'll have that done by the end of the month. Um, I did want to touch upon the school committee targets for, the, for this year. We had 10 targets, uh, and I believe at this point, uh, target three, the committee will work with the administration to create a new high school schedule for the 2023-2024 academic year. We have our negotiations meeting uh, on the 17th. The committee will, will advocate through active involvement with the Massachusetts Association of School Committees, the state legislative changes that would advocate for the needs of small school districts. Uh, I'm going to request a legislative meeting in, in the next few weeks to discuss uh, the uh, special ed uh, increase we receive for our added district placements to see how we can proceed with that. Uh, the committee will work closely to evaluate and improve the communication efforts of the district in order to stay competitive, the aforementioned new website, and to monitor the implementation, implementation of the Vocational Partnership Program of the West Boylston Public Schools. That remains an ongoing conversation. Uh, goal 10, to develop and maintain policies which were reflective of current state laws and effective educational practices. Ongoing policy discussions, and we'll, we'll have a second reading of some policies in a few moments. And the committee will work with the administration to maximize adherence to the West Boston Public Schools policy manual and school handbook rules and expectations. Uh, the middle high school is currently uh, in the works on a handbook committee to make re recommendations to you through the course of the year. That's all I have. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Ms. Um, I, I don't know if you can speak to this, but I'm looking at the total number of students party in September and while it's significantly lower than last it year, um, we're still at over 200 tardies. So I just want to make sure that detentions are being handed out appropriately as discussed mm -hmm. because I think that, um, so we have five or more uh, students with five six or more, more. Yep. there's only six of them. So there's, all, there's a very low number of repeat offenders, but still 206 tardies mm -hmm. is disruptive to the flow of the building in the morning. It's disruptive to that first period class. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to make sure it sounds like, you know, last year it was 340, which is unacceptable, and now we're down to 206. But um, I just want to make sure that we continue to trend in that direction, and I want to make sure that the kids understand that this is no longer going to be something that is acceptable. Um, and, and make sure that we're right. I'll continue that. to provide this report monthly as well. Yeah, please. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Anything else? If not, we'll move on to um, school committee reports. Um, we'll start with the superintendent's evaluation. So this is the evaluation for the 2021-2022 school year. All of the committee members have provided me with feedback and I have compiled it into um, a single report. Um, the overall rating was proficient with a high impact on student learning. Um, I'll read off what the end up comments are. It says, uh, Mr. Maher continues to succeed in leading the West Boylston school system. A key area of focus the, uh, this year was on level of communication that is provided to the entire district, including parents, staff, committee, and the rest of the community. The committee believes that this has always been a strong quality that has continued. 
One goal the school committee looks heavily on is level of learning. The primary component of the success of the level of learning is management and operations. This year, the committee selected a high level of learning and proficient for management and operations. However, there were some items that need some improvement. The committee would like to see additional attention given to the administration of the middle high school in respect to culture, scheduling, behavior, and the low achievement on tests, more specifically AP exams. It is worth noting that there are other areas that Mr. Mahar exceeded expectations. This primarily comes with managing the budget along with capital needs related to the school buildings. With the budget being uh, extremely tight and the needs of the buildings, he's able to navigate through all of the issues which also impact the level of learning. In summary, the school committee rated Mr. Maha's performance as proficient with a high impact of learning. However, there are some tasks that were left, uh, sorry, some tasks where the committee felt his performance exceeded certain expectations. There's still some areas of improvement that will create an even higher level of learning. So if I could have a motion to approve Mr. Maha's evaluation. We'll make a motion to approve Mr. Maha's evaluation for the 2022-2023 school year. Uh, or last, last school year, 21-22 school year. Can I get a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in, uh, yes, no. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Um, next, we'll move on to a second reading and adoption of policy IJNDB, acceptable use of technology. Could I get a motion? I'll make a motion for second reading and adoption of policy IJNDB, acceptable use of technology. Get a second? A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, second reading and adoption of policy JEDB, student dismissal precautions. I'll make a motion that we approve that we do second reading and adopt policy JEDB, student dismissal Can I get a second? Second. Any discussion from this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, can I get a motion for a second reading and adoption of policy JJ, co-curricular and extracurricular activities? I'll make a motion for the um, second reading and adoption of policy JJ, co-curricular and extracurricular activities. Can I get a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, next is to vote for a couple trips. The first one is the 2023 student trip to Puerto Rico. Can I get a motion? I'll make a motion to vote to approve the 2023 student trip to Puerto Rico. Can I get a second? Second. Any discussion? Nope, just saw the email went out, so hopefully you'll start to get some good responses for that. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I was going to say, though, I would appreciate that the email waits until the school committee votes on something before it goes out. So it did, both of them it, came it, out yeah, a little, but little I premature. Think, I do but think we did say, though, that yeah, they could they, they could garner the interest. Yeah, but, get numbers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. All, right, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Um, and then a motion to vote to approve the 2023 student trip to Canada. Motion to vote to approve the 2023 student trip to Canada. Can I get a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, Nancy, do you have anything you want to add? I don't. Jason? Um, yes. I, so I don't think how I should say this. I want to say, well, obviously, I want to thank all of our faculty and staff for all the hard work they do every day. Um, and I feel as though, um, so last week, the middle high school open house and conference is being scheduled on the same, at the same exact time. 
was a disservice to some parents in this district. Um, there's a lot of tug of war being done amongst parents in this building. Where do I go? When do I go? There's a little bit of some scheduling issue. It also happened to fall on senior night for the soccer team. So right away, um, any parent who has a, a player on the team is out of the field. Um, so I just think, and having talked to some of the teachers here, they were a little shocked at the lack of uh, attendance. And so whether or not we can promote this, we can try to engage families a little bit more in the future, separate those two events. Um, you know, my wife and I attended. It was great to meet all the teachers uh, for both of our kids. Um, but we had to kind of pick and choose you know, how to attack the division. Um, other than that, I think we can do a better job engaging families. I know that's kind of an ongoing struggle on how to get you know, parents, families into this building to see some of the great things that you know, our students and our faculty are doing every day. Um, so it's just an ongoing uh, goal. Thank you. I just, just want to say, although I, we had good attendance at our open house, I, Chris and I did talk about that, and it just kind of slipped our mind why we didn't think about scheduling. I think it's not to put blame on the pandemic, yeah, yeah. but like we hadn't done it in a couple of years. Right, no, just I just kind of forgot it, about it. it. Yeah. Um, but we did hear from some parents, and we'll definitely do a better job with that scheduling-wise and communicating. Now, I just wanted to speak to the, so the senior night for soccer, that had been set, and honestly, there's four of us that are senior parents, and we all said, you know, the game, I personally know that if I need to speak to teachers, I can get a hold of them. And as a parent of a senior, I've talked to most of the teachers and know that if Cameron's having a problem in French, that I can email Mrs. Mm -hmm. Perkins. And it's tough to make everything fit into a schedule. Right. They proposed doing the senior night game at 4 o'clock, and I think that's a disservice to the seniors oh, because no, they no. want to play at night under the lights. Um, I just think it's hard to make everything work. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, was there something going on across the street? The I just know night? that when we had our open house, there was something scheduled the same night, so there was a little bit of a conflict. We did hear from so a couple parents. Yeah. Your issue was that this was going on and this was going on in both yes. hallways. So I asked about that, and I was told that this was happening from 6 to 7, and this was starting at 7 o'clock. The email came up, the high school was 6 to 8. So because when I brought up the fact that senior night was hardly as much of an issue as doing this, yeah. I was told this was not going to be competing. Yeah, yeah, and no, I, I don't, I wouldn't say it was just more of a disservice to at least four parents, but those are just seniors. How many other parents are out there watching here? Yeah. Right. Well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's another issue <laughs> altogether. Yeah. Yeah. But I will say that having, having kids in both wings makes it a little bit more difficult to, right. because you're trying to fit two in at the same time. Right. I just want to add too that many of us are dual division teachers, so we have to pick and choose as well. Good and point. Mm -hmm. Leaving notes on your door saying, sorry, mm -hmm. I won't be back till whatever time because you had to present at the middle school. Yep. So you felt guilty about shortchanging high school teachers, and at the same time, you did. so there's that too. Great because point. we're a small Great school, point. we do have to do dual division teaching. Thank so, you for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for bringing that up too. Yeah, so it affects, I think, everyone. Yeah. I definitely think that next year that should be yeah. separate. And unfortunately, that means, though, asking folks like yourself to come out twice. Mm -hmm. right. So that's the other thing that's... And I, I think that was one of the reasons why the administration thought it would be convenient. So it's sort of... Yeah. Understand. Yeah. Understand. All right. Anything else? Okay. Um, just a couple of things. So the tardy thing... We'll, we'll revisit that. Um, if we are going to be more in depth with MCAS next month, so obviously I have concerns about, um, you know, the science one is a little glaring at 44 for the next gen. And compared to other districts, I expect better from us. One of the things that we've talked about and the fact that the, the high school schedule sometimes leaves gaps for kids because we have, you know, the block. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you look at our kids, they perform really well until they get to the high school. 
And then it's like we have math for half a year and then we don't have math for eight months. And it causes a lot of problems. And I don't know if this is possible, but I would like to look at something and follow kids from grade three up compared to maybe one or two other districts and see as they move, do you know what I'm saying? So maybe the third graders starting in 2015, look at, yes, look at them as they go, are they kind of together until they get to the high school and does it fall apart? Um, we did get this report just now for West Boylston and just looking at 2021. West Boylston was only offering nine AP courses. Tahanto was offering 12. Tahanto had 85 kids take the tests. We had 96. So that's that's a good thing. Um, their kids, one test was only 28. Our kids were 60. But then they had kids that had three and four tests, and we didn't. And it's because our kids can't fit them into their schedule with the block. We just can't possibly get them the schedule. So I think that this is just another thing that we as a committee can look at and say, this is what our kids aren't getting because we just can't make it work with the time constraints. I think MCAS scores are one thing to look at because of the gaps, and I think being able to offer more to the students. Also, this data just shows us where we're missing things. So I just, I'm glad that we have it, because I think going forward it's going to be important for those conversations. So thank you. Thank you. Christine? Um, just that I appreciate the absent and the absent of the report. Um, how, just like ballpark figure, how many students have in high school? Not the whole building, but just like the high school. High school has, and they have. Because honestly, at the risk of sounding ignorant, um, I, I looked at the numbers and I thought, that's not High school's at 2.30. Okay, so I, just, I looked at these numbers and I thought, well, that sounds, it just sounds astronomically high, but, but I wasn't sure what I was comparing mm -hmm. to, you know what I mean? 2.30 so, right now. So it is. I mean, you know, people get sick. So this is individual cases or individuals, individual people? Yes. So almost everybody's been tardy? So, I mean, how many days were we in school? Oh, not in, no, just the, I think the tablets. No, and specific people, no. Oh, okay. no. So, 22 days. Yeah, 20. So, in 22 days, we had 230. So, it's, it's yes. 10 kids a day. Mm -hmm. 10 kids a day. But there is some kind of rotation because only six of them, there's only six individuals with five or more. Right. So, that number's way down. I, and I think that if we're going to, um, mm -hmm. you know, this goes back to some of the things we discussed at the retreat, getting yes. back to basics. Yes. Um, you know, making sure that things like this are being checked in on. Mm -hmm. Because I think that when we were doing hybrid learning, and even last year to a certain extent, you know, I know that I think that we kind of had the attitude that, okay, we're trying to get back to normal, let's give a little grace, you know, it's part of the kids. And I, and I support that completely, but I think, okay, so now we're, we're past that. That was yep. noted in the, in the commissioner's discussion on MCAS that it, it was, I mean, it, it was prevalent throughout the state that some families were taking vacations that they had put off. Mm -hmm. uh, there were, you know, there, there was still the lingering impact of, of COVID, um, I mean, we can't deny that impact on attendance. And there was a, perhaps a general, I don't want to say malaise, but maybe a little bit of nonchalance with getting there on time after the previous year. I think that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. I, think, um, I, I think that that's true, and I say this as, as a parent, in the middle of the team, I think that's true as students and parents. You know, I mean, I think it's the end of the day of our Chronic absenteeism was through the roof in the state. Um, I, I yeah, do have a, a yeah, it was, obviously it's a focus. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, um, based on Jen's MCAS request, is that data that's readily available? Based I'm on gonna have to do like a little that? digging on that one. I'm not that's sure possible. if that is right, right now, uh, as the release continues to trickle in with the information in, in Edwin and what we can access. But I'll do it a little bit. Just a thought. Yeah. It would be a, a comparison that would give us some real, you know, to see exactly mm -hmm. where we're 
missing the mark and if it's in the same place. All right. Uh, yeah, I think my only request would be to, as we talked earlier, is to have an agenda item maybe to discuss what the committee feels is the <coughs> appropriate target for the, for the MCAS mm -hmm. members um, compared to the state and, and ourselves, I believe, or anybody else has any other ideas of how we should be comparing. Uh, mainly because I just feel that uh, if the state declines, that shouldn't give us a pass to decline. All right, if nobody has anything else, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Can I get a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, everybody.